Clay Fighter busted out of the circus and onto your Super NES back in 1993, and it was one of the very first games to feature the art of claymation as one of its big selling points. Developed by Visual Concepts, yes, the very same Visual Concepts that would later go on to make the 2K series of sports games, and published by Interplay, Clay Fighter was positioned as a less serious entry into the now burgeoning fighting game genre. While other games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat were busy duking it out for fighting game supremacy, Clay Fighter was trying to take a more humorous approach with their game. So did Clay Fighter succeed in being a great alternative choice for fighting game fans? Or was it relegated to that dark part of the circus tent that no one wants to go to because it's all damp and smells weird? Well, slather yourself with your favorite Clay, because we're about to see if Clay Fighter melts underneath the spotlight. Start up Clay Fighter and you're treated to what has to be one of the more cringe-worthy opening theme songs ever made for a game. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's cool that there's even a theme song in the game at all, but man is that bad. Press the start button and you'll eventually make it to the character select screen where you get your first taste of Clay Fighter's unique roster. Filled with such timeless warriors as a snowman and a clown that appears to have been ravaged by years of meth addiction, your first big challenge in Clay Fighter is just trying to settle on which one of these guys or things to represent you in the game. Yes, again, I get it, Clay Fighter's supposed to be goofy and crazy and all these characters come from the circus and so on, but even as a kid playing this, I wasn't finding this mishmash of bad stereotypes and reject Saturday morning cartoon characters funny in the least. Still though, you're gonna have to pick one if you want to continue, so just choose the character or thing that makes you the least uncomfortable and then get ready for even more wacky fun. Once you're into the fighting itself, you'll quickly see that this is yet another fighting game trying its best to imitate the gameplay of Street Fighter 2, just with all that whole aforementioned wackiness thrown in as the main differentiator. You get three punch buttons and three kick buttons, which is honestly about five too many buttons for what Clay Fighter's trying to do here, since it's obviously not trying to be some super deep fighting game. Instead, Clay Fighter focuses on weird and zany attacks and special moves to throw at your opponents, in the hopes that stuff like that will disguise the fact that this isn't a very good fighting game. Everything feels like it's in slow motion a lot of the time, and even just landing a hit feels off, like it didn't register or something. Special attacks require a strange amount of precision to pull off, which is weird for a game trying to focus on being simple and fun. And while it may be fun to see what weird shit each character's special attacks do, it doesn't keep your attention for very long. And what you're left with is a slow, clunky fighting game that really has nothing going for it besides the whole Clay characters trying to be funny thing. And even saying it has that going for it is a bit of a stretch. Yes, if you couldn't tell, the whole gimmick of Clay Fighter is the Clay characters and backgrounds. Every character was at one point handmade and animated, resulting in the digitized look of the characters. And while this could have been really neat, Clay Fighter somehow manages to mess up the one thing it tried so hard to nail. First off, the characters are animated horribly instantly losing whatever cool hand-animated look it could have had. Everything you do with a character seems overly choppy, which doesn't help the already bad controls. And I already touched on just how bad the character designs are, but I feel it's worth mentioning again because good god are they bad. You know you're getting into something special when an angry snowman is the most compelling character in the entire game. The rest of the characters circle the toilet of bad design choices, culminating with a boss that's literally just a spinning circle with googly eyes on him. The rest of the game looks just as bad, with backgrounds so ugly and uninteresting that it somehow manages to make the characters themselves look okay. It's really sad too, since Clay Fighter could have genuinely been a striking game with better art design and direction. Instead, we're left with the equivalent of a giant clay turd of a game. On the surface, Clay Fighter is a pretty great idea. A less serious fighting game intended for a younger audience or people that were getting tired of the fighting game genre as a whole. Clay Fighter was pushing for just that and relished in the idea of being the anti-fighting game, with ads making fun of Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter in just about every gaming magazine that you could find at the time. It was meant to be lighthearted fun, and for the most part, I think they had a great blueprint to do just that. I know a lot of people to this day that still genuinely love Clay Fighter. Unfortunately, 
unfortunately for me, the execution just isn't there. The characters are all uniformly awful, the gameplay is slow and generic, and even the whole clay aesthetic gets lost in one of the more aggressively ugly games ever made for the Super NES and Genesis. Still though, if you've got a friend around and enough alcohol, you could maybe get a few rounds of fun out of Clay Fighter. Just don't expect anything more from it. The rest of us should probably just send these circus freaks back to the unemployment line once and for all.